All right, I restarted the recording. I will just take a quick one minute break and get a drink. Um, okay. Okay, where were we? Um, I should exercise a little bit more of this stuff. Like, if I do 1 plus 2 times whatever, does that actually work? Well, and much of the point, what does it look like in the C code? It should look like, um, okay, that does look reasonable. Um, okay, so maybe stuff didn't break. A bunch of our Lexer tests sh should actually be broken now because they assumed you had the full, um, let me just rerun those. This is going to break because they were testing that we could. Yeah, this is going to. This is going to over. Well, it's not going to be representable. So. Um, I guess that didn't work. Um, let's see here. Int. Int max. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's interesting. Oh, I guess because it interprets it as unsigned. Um, I guess I should just, yeah, what's, um, Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. That did the trick. Okay, so um, promote. We were working on this promote thing when we push the stack. So <clears throat> when we do the promotion, we do this, <clears throat> which is fine. But then we also, um, if this is const, we have to actually also do the promotion on the operand itself. Um, Convert val Okay, let's say let's do it like this. Let's write this thing. So we're convert converting from whatever type it has originally to a new type. Um and so it's essentially going to look something like, you know, Depending on the target type, it's going to um, to do some sort of dispatch like that. Although that seems like um, 
let's not do the full set of things because I don't think they will all be able to trigger in practice. But um, like certainly this one, where I guess they will if we do casts. How do we prevent doing n squared cases in our conversion? Oh, audio is very low. Sorry, I maybe moved the microphone away. Um, I remember once upon a time I wrote some code. Um, Maybe this, I think I had the same problem in needing to do n squared casts. Oh, and I used macros. Maybe I should do that too. Um, yeah, maybe this is not too bad. How did I do this? I, okay, so this is a trick. So I have these locals that I assign various values to. Um, so I cast all possible things. And then I see. So first this assigns to all possible values, and then the other one. So this is like a scatter, and then this is a gather. Maybe that we don't need the full n squared matrix here. I guess we kind of do. So maybe I'll do something similar. Um, um, Except I can't use case, I guess. No, I can. All right. Um, Okay, what was my trick? Right, right, right. Um, so given this original thing, okay, I see. Oh, and I use that. Oh, this is pretty clever, I see. Okay, okay, okay. I gotcha. Um, maybe we can do it a little bit better there. So in this case, instead of using this naming scheme, yeah, that's okay. All right, so the case is going to be, um, there's a kind, there's a type, and we have this. And then we have uh, 
um, let's see. I guess these will all be implicitly converted, so there's not even, I don't know why I was doing those casts there. Um, I can just do operand dot, or actually, so let's, let's say we have val is operand val. Then you can just say val um, t, let's call it t. Um, Do I do the n squared dispatch more directly than I was doing in that old code? So from any source type to any target type. I guess I could, there's no reason not to do it that way. Let's see here. Um, yeah, I guess it would just be like, um, operand val dot c equals operand val dot t. Yeah, so that's definitely easier than what I was doing here. We should have added these before I copy and case paste it because now I have to add this crap to every line. Actually, let me do it like this. Um,
Gotta love this macro from how all this stuff is unnecessary now. And then we just have to, if operand is const, um, then switch on operand type kind. And then we do, what are the parameters? Um, boom, boom, boom. Case type char Wait, so this type here is not necessary. Um, so the kind and then t, right? U char s char short u short int u at u i u s s s c u c and then also long 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 and float. Um, maybe I should move this in here just to scope it. Type char is not a member. What was that error? I have to do this. No, that's not the issue. I guess the problem is just we didn't actually add floats and doubles here. Okay, so they do want us to throw I guess that's also why doing that intentionally it's an annoying warning I mean I, I guess that's why I did the explicit conversion in the other case um, Actually, you know what? I can just do this. Um, so operand well, t. Let's replace that with just t. And then I'll just say um, no, that's sorry. Just do it here.
<clears throat> man, it's like pulling out teeth. It's my least favorite kind of work, but sometimes you can't really avoid it. Um, you know what, I'll put this out of the function entirely. It's kind of gunking up everything too much. Or at least the function looks clean, even if the macro itself is a disgusting travesty. Um, I think in this case, basically, I see, yeah, I think this is the right way to handle it. If you try to, if you have a constant operand and you try to convert it to something and it's not one of these things, then it loses its constantness. Otherwise, it preserves its constantness and the value gets converted, but otherwise it loses its constantness. That seems reasonable. Um, all right. And then in general, I guess basically what we do is we set this type to the destination type. Actually, let's do that. Let's call it type. OK, so this now takes an operand, which may be constant, may not be. Um, and really, it only has work to do in the case where the thing is constant. That seems reasonable. And in hindsight, this does not seem too crazy, actually. Not too crazy. All right, let's do promotion. Let us do promotion. Okay, um, so when we're doing promotion, I think, yeah, basically what it amounts to is it's this kind of code, but now uh, we can just call convert operand type int. And so if you have any of these types, you get promoted to int. And again, this is kind of backend dependent. Um, But I think for any architecture we care about, this is probably going to be true. Because it assumes all of these are strictly, well, they're always less rank than int, but they're also representable within int, I think. Um, and all the other ones just stay the same. So that's the promotions, and that takes care of the constant promotions as well. Um, and then we have to do convert operands. Um, something like this. So these take two operands in, and I think the post condition is basically going to be that um, they will have the same type when we're done. And this is going to implement the sort of stuff we were looking at in the spec. And so if one of them has type double, then the other one gets converted. I guess the other thing we have to do is we have to check whether it's a legal conversion. Check if legal conversion.
yeah, so we're not doing that right now. Um, so what's a legal conversion? Um, we can convert between any two arithmetic types, right? Can convert between any two arithmetic types, no problem. We can convert from pointer to, well, and there's also a question of implicit versus explicit, right? Um, For now, let me just leave it like this, and let me put it to do note. Check for legal conversion. Um, and so we do the promotions, and then we do this. And we're going to basically promote the right operand to double. And the same thing here. Um, else, I think we do the same thing for float. And then we do promotions. <clears throat> and once we've done promotions, I guess we have to do this stuff here. Um, actually, I'm just called it call it like this because it's only for arithmetic. Um, There's also pointer arithmetic to think about. But right now we're just thinking about integer and float arithmetic. So let's ignore pointer arithmetic for a sec. So we promote these. Um, did I do something here? Okay.
Um, if they're both of the same signedness, you convert from the lesser rank to the higher rank. And actually, yeah, that's fine. If the operand that has unsigned integer type. All right. Um, do like this. So if this is the sign type. And if
Mm. So if the left uh, left one is signed and the right ranks is greater than or equal to, then we can wait for it. Yep. Okay, so that covers this case here. Else, and so let's think about it. Um, if we're in this case, Actually, so let's just collapse. Um. Man, I love case analysis. Clear as mud. Definitely need some unit tests for this stuff. All right. Um, yeah, actually, I want to test that in isolation. Let's make sure that code still is entered. Okay, so let's take um, let's test promotion first. Um, So um Oh, right. Um, promoted. Actually, let me just. Um, this may be a weird way of writing it, but let's write it like this. And then promote type, type char should be type int, for example. Let's just write the whole matrix.
um, Long should be unpromoted. Um, let's just do these for now. Oh, that's a typo. Um, okay. So we have arithmetic conversions. Convert arithmetic operands. Um, let's do convert arithmetic types. Remote type. Let's do a corresponding thing here. Convert arithmetic types. Um, arithmetic operands operand r value Um, so I guess this would be type int. We're not going to do the full matrix because here it's n squared. Um, but you can do, I guess, like use short. Let's do some stuff like this. And actually, I want to step through this. So, okay, so this is a char and a char. So this became an int, and this became an int. Hence, they're the same signedness. I think actually I could leave it. I'm just going to follow the standard um, and structure the case analysis like this. But actually, I think even the, the conversion is going to be a no-op. Um, but let's just leave it like that to follow the standard more closely in their, the way they write the case analysis. Um, okay. Okay. That works. Let's do something less trivial. Um, oops. What was that? Um, so let's do int and uint, and this should be uint according to the standard. And so these are, they didn't get promoted. And, uh, right. So these should, still should not have changed. They're still int and uint. So this case doesn't work. They don't have the same sign in this. 
and the left is the signs of the sign that this should convert it. Um, so that works. If you do a case like this, to promote to long, and I promote convert. So these don't do anything. Um, they have the same signedness, so this should come in. And then it decides that int has lesser rank than long. Oh, so this is actually wrong. If int has less rank than right, then left should be converted. You always want to convert from the lower rank to the higher rank. So left is the int and right is the long. And then that gets converted to long, which is correct. Okay, other cases. Um, long and u long. So these should not be touched by the promotions, and this is not true. Okay. Uh, actually, let me try tie flipping into a test the other code path, even though it should be basically the same code, just flipped. So that works. Um, okay, let's think. Hmm. Let's put that here. Okay. Um Okay. Let's just say for the moment that this is not totally unreasonable. Um, Let's test the corresponding code for um, the constant stuff because the conversion conversion is one thing, but we also need to verify that uh, you know if I create something like a a char um, Was it convert? Right. Okay. Um, so let's say this is should probably have a helper function to test this. Um,
Oh no, there is a destination type. What am I talking about? All right, um, assert, convert, convert, const. We're going to convert. Let's do some things that should be value preserving, um, like converting from to int from char. And this would still be equal to that. So the operand is a constant and has value 100. And it says it's a constant and it hits that case. And then we're done. Um, let's do something harder, like converting from int to uint, and we have minus one, and this should be equal to uint max, I believe. Right. And another case we can try is going from uh, u long long Oh, U L long. Okay, that works too. All right, so we've kicked the tires of the conversion and promotion stuff. Let's actually start looking at using it. So in a binary operator, Ugh, I dread having to deal with this, but anyway. Um, so we have these two. Let me step this out for now. We want to be able to revert in case we break something. Um, So we do this constant stuff. And this is where something has to change. Um,
let me think about this for a sec. So we evaluate the two sub-expressions. We convert them to a common type using the arithmetic conversions. If they're constant, we have to do constant expression evaluation. Right now, we're definitely not doing the right thing here. We have to do, well, the question is what the right thing to do for this kind of case is. My intuition says that we should do If we do long, long, and u long, long, and then we truncate it, we should be able to get the right results for all the narrower types as well. Um, and so that provides some kind of strength reduction for the number of combinations we need to consider. Um, I think what you want here is you know you probably want something like this. Actually, let's start with the unary version since that's uh, quite a bit easier.
Oh, interesting. Did I never have these breaks in the first place? That's really bad. That was a bug. You know what, I should just do this, I think. Um. No, that's probably fine. Um. Okay, eval that, so I guess let's follow the same pattern here. No, fuck it. The interface should dictate what's natural here. Um, okay. So this should be types um, and depending on whether this is signed or unsigned we need to take two cases right now we, we're also not handling floats I guess Um, but in any case, if there's a sign type, we do everything with, um, Um, convert operand left operand to long long and then long long x is left operand val ll and y is right operand val rr or not <laughs> rr it's nonsense um, something like that Let's just rewrite these while we're at it. I guess this is also not totally right for the shift. Shifts are a little bit different in terms of how the conversions work because the shift amount is not required to conform to the same type. So let me put a note here.
I could do search and replace for this, but sometimes I like doing things manually just because it forces me to look at it when normally I just kind of scroll past it. Um, this is one of those cases where I haven't looked at this code in a while. Oh, I see where the, okay, so the issue is, um, you know, there's a result. Okay, and this I will use um, eval binary op. For this, I will use search and replace. So return should be r equals um, now I have to do breaks on everything, but that's not too bad. Not too bad until I get out of phase. What? Why did it jump up there? Right, that's fine. Oh, and then from here, I guess I should say operand type, operand val. Right, and this should be eval binary op. This should be the left type. And left type, left val, right val. radio and so once we've computed r um we're going to say result operand is operand const type no actually it should be type long long because we haven't converted it yet uh, then we do convert operand back to the type um, what do we do for this right so this should be out here and then we say val All oh, right, it should be val dot ll val dot ll equals r something like this, um, and then we need the same thing for unsigned. This is probably not the cleanest way of doing it, but it prevents me, it avoids me having to do more than just these two cases because these should be, like basically what I'm exploiting is that we will do the computations in the widest unsigned and signed types, um, and then we will narrow at the end. Um, and so this should give you, the, give you the same final result, but without ha having to handle every possible, you know, char arithmetic shorter like having all of these intermediate sizes so i think this should uh well i don't know if it works but no i think it will it will work um i don't want to have this comment in two different places so i'm going to have to delete that um okay let's see let's see if it still works What is, oh, this is just the test cases. Let's run the actual compiler. Um, uh, 
that's a suspiciously I don't like when things work on the first try so let's um, let's actually go and set some breakpoints <clears throat> so eval binary op eval binary op Oh, I think this is just not happening because compiler, right, we need to set the other startup project. Okay. So what's the expression? There's an int and an int. I guess actually the case I'm really interested in is here. So here you have two ants and it's two plus four, it looks like. Um, and so now they've been converted to long long is a 64-bit thing. This would be a better test if they were ne negative, so it had to do a sign extension. So let's do a test case for that after. But anyway, um, okay, and this is a multiplication. So the result operand is going to be 8, presumably. Wait, didn't it multiply? Wasn't it supposed to multiply two by? Okay, maybe the other one was two by four, right? Seem wonky. Let me go back to that. No, it should catch that. That's not too bad. Um, so the operation is multiplication. A little bit misleading. Yeah, it is multiplication. Um, so multiplication and the operands are what? Two and four. What happened there? That was definitely not correct. So we have, oh, it's because of this. Typo. Okay, so now two and four. This is eight, which is correct. And then finally it converts so, so currently result operand has long long type and after this it should be back to int and it can return that. Okay. Um, we should test something where different kinds of types I suppose Um, resolve x per cast. Okay. 
feel myself getting tired. I'll just finish this track and then I'll take a break and get some lunch. Um, how do we get better test coverage of that without just writing a crap load of code? We also need to do pointer arithmetic. We need to do float and double arithmetic. Um, let's see. Actually, let me, um, let me try to keep this more parallel as well to the other code. If R is the result. Um, okay, maybe this is a good stopping point. Um, so what did we do, just to summarize before we shut off the stream, we did, and I don't know if it works, and actually I know of cases specifically it doesn't handle, it doesn't catch, it lets you add stuff that shouldn't be added right now. Um, but at least if you're using integer types, we should now do, unless there's bugs, and I'm sure there will be, but uh, we should do the integer promotions, uh, arithmetic conversions, and um, and we also upgraded our constant expression evaluation for integer expressions to handle basically all of these types. Because now if you do resolve expert binary, for example, uh, we do the arithmetic conversions, so you can do stuff like you know, add a constant char to a constant short, and you will get a constant int. Uh, and for both the signed and the unsigned case, we do the actual evaluation properly. Um, so anyway, I think that's good enough for now. Um, I will uh, get some lunch, and then I'll be working on this after after lunch, and uh, hopefully get this into a good state uh, ASAP. So yeah, thanks for hanging out. Um, this actually this piece right here is probably by far the the biggest outstanding area in the type system that needs to be fixed before we can consider version zero to be anywhere uh, usable in practice with like arbitrary c libraries that interchange in all these different types and so uh, i've been kind of dreading doing some of this work even though it's not conceptually that difficult but just because there's a lot of cases and stuff and it's not the most fun code um, but i think we made a very good start on it now and i'm should be able to carry this momentum through uh, to the rest of, of today and, and hopefully get it done. Uh, anyway, I will see everyone, I guess it's Wednesday. What day? Oh, it is Wednesday today. It's so a Friday for me. Um, but um, yeah, if you want to follow the GitHub repo, I'm planning to do a bunch of check-ins today and tomorrow related to this. Um, so maybe Friday we'll be able to work on, I'll be working Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to get this done. But um, maybe on Friday we will be done with this type system stuff and we can return to the code generator and kind of tidy up some of the dark corners there. And then over the weekend I can just be in bug fixing mode and just kind of whack them all on the bugs and get it into a shippable state on Sunday. So anyway, yeah, uh, it's going to be exciting once everything is done. All right, see you guys around.